let's super geek out on this. Like, I'm just gonna take all my clothes off and we'll talk about how we did this song. So, this is the kick drum. We heard it earlier. Um, uh, looks like I added a little bit of high end on it. That probably happened later on in the mix. Um, but right now it's going through um, my kick aux, which for this song looks like drum leveler, which is kind of a magical plugin. Um, takes a little bleed out. Somehow, doesn't mess with the kick drum, just takes the bleed out. Um, there's probably a fair amount of EQ. As you can tell, a lot of EQ. In which, I like that kick drum, but for whatever reason, it sounded better with this. And then this super fun plugin on uh, kick drum um, just adds a little bit of low-end presence. Um, sometimes I use that, sometimes I use the DBX160. Um, it just kind of depends on on the um, on the song, um, and this is going out. We can talk about the routing at some point later, but this is going straight out. And, and on this song, I'm actually skipping the SSL for the kick drum. Um, so drum samples. Pretty much every song that we do, um, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, have an assistant who will go in and throw drum samples up, uh, even if I don't use them. So any song that we do. Um, we'll have this, just a little, oh, it's way down. That's just a trigger. Uh, it's a generic kick drum sound. And then I'll put something on, oh, what's funny. You know what's funny about this is, that's how much of that sample I'm using. Um, can you hear it? Nope, me neither. So the way I use drum samples is if you have a kick drum that needs, say, a little bit of attack, like this sample, or um, a little bit of low end, or whatever. I find it easier to just sneak a sample in than trying to EQ something that isn't there. All right, snare, same deal. So, this is the snare drum that we had. It's going through some craziness. So, it's going through these two channels, and basically what this is is, the snare is going through my SSL. So these are the snare drum channels, and the thing that you will notice is 15 dB, 15 dB, 15, 15, 15, 15, like these things are dimed. There's all kinds of EQ on this. Um, and we look, when we look at the snare going through it, there's also an insane amount of compression on a couple. Um, and in fact, there's this too, which is one of the, one of the uh, best parts about the SSL, this uh, 4000 is like the clips. And the clip sounds really good on snare drum. Like this is one of the one of the powers of the SSL is the way that it distorts. Um, like it sounds amazing on snare drum. So I mix and match these, and a lot of times it's just like impact, ghost notes, stuff like that. This channel right here is, come on, the unequued. Just a straight snare drum, which is getting a tiny bit of API, well, fair amount, um, which I honestly probably started with this guy's, like, you know, snare drum setting, because, um, you know, he's pretty good. Uh, so it sounds like on this one I am using a fair amount of snare samples. So again, um, I always have these samples up and running so I can just really quickly like like hop through stuff and see what works and see what doesn't work. So this is a sample of the Yuri metronome and I lay that under the snare drum. Because what it does is it just adds some just some impact on it. Um, I'm not using a ton of it, but it definitely adds a neat character to the sound. That actually plays into something else that I do. Um, on snare drum, which is this thing here. We call it the boom box. Um, it's a set of plugins that I use to put a subharmonic synthesizer on the snares. So here's the snare drum. Here's the snare without the boom box. This is it's just low end. This is a subharmonic frequency generator. That's a gate to just keep it quiet. And this is just more like low end off of it. And all it kind of does, 
add some, just add some low end punch to the snare drum. It's a fun little trick. And the other thing, um, I'll mess around with plugins, even using the analog stuff. So as I'm looking at this, like I'm cranking a ton of low end into the snare drum, and then it's, this is going out to the SSL, and then it's coming back in, and getting some, a little bit of EQ with this. And since this is three tracks on my SSL, they get blended back down into two with a down mix plugin. And then you know I'll mess around with stuff like a clip on the snare drum, or you know some low end. Like this is taking out stuff under 20 hertz just so it doesn't muck around. And you know, this is something that just helps on a song like this. I'll use this to bring up ghost notes so you can hear him. Especially in the verses. Kind of helps bring those ghost notes out. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, there are no rules. Um, it, it's whatever works. Toms, uh, Usually we clean them like this. Um, just so there's not a ton of bleed in between. Sometimes I'll drag them out. So the toms are just sitting there running through a bus. They're going through, the toms are going through the SSL. The uh, snares are going through the SSL. The overheads are also going through the SSL. Um, and on this song, usually my overheads are going through an 1176 um, outboard uh, insert. Uh, on this song, I guess I decided that they didn't need an 1176, so they're not going through them. Um, let's see what we've got on here. Looks like I started with... Pretty much, you'll notice on just about everything, I'm getting rid of low end if I don't need it. Um, like, you can waste a lot of headroom and, and, uh, and stuff by letting all these digital tracks bleed low end into your, um, into your project. So uh, I'd get rid of the low end. A Little bit of Clarifonic that opens it up on the top. Um, so all of these are going out through the SSL too. Um, and it looks like on this one I was actually combining a little bit of distortion in with the overheads. And then this, these are the rooms, which I'm barely using. They're going through, well, it's not even hitting that. A little bit of sustain on this thing, because I want a little more sustain. Um, all right, we also always put crash cymbals um, on to a mix. I always put a crash cymbal, or I don't put it, Michael puts it, like um, just in case you've got the drums and everything sounds great, but when he hits the crash, it just doesn't leap out that much, but you don't want to ride it up and have the drums go like that on certain songs. So I'll just sneak in a tiny bit of, of sampled cymbal. And you know, if you do it right, it just sounds like he hit the cymbal a little bit harder. It blends in with what's actually there. Before I do that, I should talk about when, when the drums go through the SSL, a bunch of stuff happens. So uh, they're coming out through the console. Um, the drum faders that I have on my desk are sent to two buses, the front bus and the back bus. The back bus has a pair of distressors on it that are always kind of rocking, you know, in, and they're running in British mode. If you take it out of the drum mix, um, it changes the drums a fair amount. So those are always running on parallel in the SSL, and then because of the way this thing works, you can actually come over here and check out um, this thing, like the mix bus compressor is running on the drums too, but it's a quad bus compressor, which means the parallel that's going through the distressors is coming back and going through the mix bus compressor again. Um, you know, and for whatever reason, it, it works the magic on drums most of the time. Now, the interesting thing about this is, on this song, the kick drum's not going through the SSL because probably because it was hitting the compressor so hard that they were kind of pumping. And I, I wanted the sound of all of that on the drums, but I didn't want it to pump. So I just sent the kick drum out through the Dangerous instead of the SSL. Um, the rest of the drums go through the SSL and the, the kick drum I can get nice and loud and it won't like pump the rest of the drums. On to bass. Um, Craig's such an amazing bass player. Um, so we do all kinds of fun stuff with bass. 
this is what bass would sound like with nothing on it. Obviously, I'm doing a lot of stuff. And he's got great tone, but we're having fun, we're having fun with this. So here's what's on this bass thing. Little Sans amp. This is actually the SSL. It actually goes through two channels. Uh, this channel has an 1176 on it because I just love the way 1176 sounds on bass. This channel has um, an old UTC passive EQ um, and it adds, it just adds some like crazy roundness and, and low end. That's that thing sitting over there. Um, and it's going through the DBX 165 underneath it just for some makeup gain. And uh, I don't think those buttons have ever, those knobs have ever moved unless somebody came into the studio and moved them. Uh, and you can see the 1176 on top is just taming the bass a little bit at 8 to 1, which is the bass ratio. I don't know why 8 to 1 always works on bass, but it does for me. Um, so what else are we doing on bass? A um, little bit of vintage warmer. A little bit of this Aphex thing, like barely any, but it adds a little tiny bit of articulation. Um, this is fun. This is crazy. So the the soft tube plugins, the UAD plugins are killer. And um, every once in a while, I just do something weird. So I just dimed 100 and 1.5k um, EQ and ran that into a little bit of compression to like calm it down. And then this was probably me messing around later with some stuff that I wanted to move around. And then we go down here and we hear. Uh, the parallel. This is uh, this bass parallel is an old RCA BA25. Um, it lives over here in the rack. It's an old radio compressor. It just adds a really fun, like grindy sort of sound on the bass. And then I will variously send it to some other things, like a little bit of micro shift sometimes to spread it a little bit and a little bit of um, Saturn distortion to add a little more character to it. You can salt the taste with all of these things. FabFilter makes amazing plugins. You see them all over the place. So, so one of the things that I really love about using digital and analog together is that you can do things that you couldn't prior. So I can take some Sans Amp distortion, you know, and add it to a bass sound and then pound that into the SSL and give it EQ and give it compression in here and the SSL is going to behave differently because the SANS amp is pushing it. Um, and then I can come back out like we looked at with these other plugins and throw in you know, a little bit of distortion or a little bit of high end or a lot of EQ or, or whatever and it's going to sound different than if I did that in the SSL or if I did it before or if I didn't have like the analog stage to kind of like push against. Um, you know, and then you can vary how all of your analog gear reacts by varying what you put into it and how hard or how soft you hit it. And then when you come out of it, you can keep manipulating it. It's great. Like, I, I love it. I, I think that uh, I found that um, for me, the digital stuff is kind of like a zoom in on all the best parts of analog. You know, um, like you can send something to an outboard 1176 and then after that you can kind of take some of the low end off and turn some stuff up in some sections and do stuff that um, back in the day you wouldn't necessarily have the control, um, you know, or the, the ability to do that with uh, if you were just working on a console. So I really enjoy having that ability to just do the hybrid thing. When it works, it works great. Um, and looking at this, bass usually goes through the SSL, but for whatever reason on this song, I was skipping the SSL going through the Dangerous, probably because I just liked the way the bass sounded not going through the SSL. You know, there's no rules. Uh, guitar. So this, I love the way SSL EQs sound on guitars. So I use SSL EQs on guitars. I also love the way LA3As sound on guitars. So I run almost all of my electrics through two channels of SSL with an LA3A on the insert. You're probably going to want to and come over and talk about that. Yeah. Um, but while, while we're doing that, so here's the guitar. 
And if we take all of this stuff off, again, tons of gain, but... Book's guitar sounds great. And maybe I shouldn't have, like, fucked with it. I should have just turned it up, but I fucked with it. So, um, I send the guitar out through SSL. And what this does is it gives me EQ and compression. And on this, usually, almost always on guitars, you end up adding a little bit of 7K. I'm reasonably certain I stole that from CLA. Um, and I push the EQ into the LA3As, um, where we get a fair amount of gain from it. So again, you know, um, this will get printed every single time. So the setting that's on here right now is probably not what, it's definitely not what I ended up using on the song. I'll get the guitar sound that I want, kind of like when you're tracking, and then I'll just print it to Pro Tools. And if I need to go back and change it later, I'll just start from scratch. Um, you know, usually. So let's see what else we did with that. This adds a little bit of, just a little bit of hair, tiny bit. Um, I love the way that this can just kind of salt in a little bit of character. And again, you know, all of this is post-processing so I can bounce my SSL insert down and I can just leave my plugin so I can mess with them later. Um, this is a really cool plugin. Um, this is kind of a guitar secret weapon for me. All it does is widen stuff a little bit. Um, and it has this horribly named uh, thing called shred, which I don't know what that means. But it puts a nice, like, low mid kind of shape into guitar. So sometimes I'll have this all the way here, sometimes I'll have it off. It doesn't matter. But I love the way this plugin moves guitars outside of the speakers a little bit. Um, just obviously adding a little bit of mid-range, a little bit of low end, not much at all. But it seems to like wake up the bottom end on this thing. And then the famous Helios plug-in. This knob right here, the bass knob, will change the low frequency response of the signal even when you don't turn up the gain. So a lot of times on guitar, I'll just use this. add a really nice low-end character to the guitars, but as you can see, there's no gain on anything else in this channel. So, let's see, electrics are also skipping the SSL on this song. Again, I'm not sure why. Maybe it just didn't sound right, or maybe I just forgot, or whatever. Um, acoustics, I always put through a bus, just to start. So what do we have on the bus? And again, this is just starting out, but a little bit of EQ, um, a couple of the Kush UBK um, like harmonic distortion plugins. These things sound really cool on guitar, especially when you're trying to get them aggressive. Like the Neve adds a little bit of like bottom, and the Altec adds a little bit of aggression, and both of them, you know, get nice and full. Tiny bit of compression with this guy, barely hitting it. PSP Mix Treble. This is a really fun acoustic guitar plugin. All it does is add a little of harmonica sight and excitement, a little bit of spread on acoustics. I use, that, I use that a lot. And then this is probably just toning up some upper harmonics, especially this thing. Um, that has some crazy, like, high-end stuff, so I was just using that to take some of the peaky stuff off the top. I'm even curious now when we get into the final mix session how much of this stuff I ended up using.